Hello and welcome to yet another episode of PhD the Philosophical Drama season 3 and today is that special episode that we do every season wherein we invite a couple who have been in academia um to come on the show and share their experiences uh, as a couple uh in PhD in uh, as well as the other aspects of uh, academic life and today uh, we have a very very special uh, couple joining us uh and in the in the a very simple statement made by the great thinker and philosopher philosopher dalai lama where he defines love as the absence of judgment and i'm not going to say anything more than that and uh, introduce our guests today uh we have today uh, with us dr suhita natkarni uh suhita did her phd uh, in theoretical physics from the ohio ohio university in the states followed by postdoc in uh, the physics department at UCSD and uh, Salk Institute and with her we have Dr Colin Zasisi uh, who did his phd in neuroscience in uh, the Florida Atlantic University in the states followed by postdoctoral stints at uh, uh, the Salk Institute as well as UC Riverside and presently uh, both of them have established labs uh, in the department of biology Uh, in the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research ISR Pune in India and today we have them with us to uh, share their entire journey and uh, let's see what they have in store for us so i'm adding you on uh, sohita and collins hello everyone uh, hello hey. first of all welcome to the show and uh, it's it's a great pleasure to have both of you here um am i audible to you guys sorry what was that am i, am I audible to you guys hear you yeah perfect it's just not all there yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> no worries so uh, thank you so much again um, for joining us today and uh, uh, being ready to do this this uh, very different type of uh, talk show thank you uh, for having us yeah so to to start with i am going to uh, you know put a very uh, very simple question to you guys uh, and it's very important uh, for people sorry are the questions going to get harder you said we're going to start with a simple question <laughs> and that's always let's see, let's see how it goes let's see how it goes i think all questions are simple for you guys so uh, let's see how it goes uh, so this the first one is um, you know it's it's important to have that person who understands your life and your career very very well so to have the person who also has a similar kind of life to be in the same similar kind of field to have the similar kind of pressures is very interesting and very important what has been your uh, take on it and how you guys find this this thing uh, helping you guys in your life are you going to go first or am i going to go first yeah. how does it work do we toss a coin every time or it's up to you it's up to you how how you guys want to <laughs> ask and talk about it yeah you, you know i'm of this say it uh, it takes a village and they typically mean raise a child right it takes a village for pretty much everything and uh, in some sense it's nice to have your own little village <laughs> right around uh, because uh, you know when uh, when uh, you you are when your spouse and are uh, uh, in the same profession and in this case scientist it really uh, helps because there is certainly a richer understanding of what uh, the trials are what uh, uh, what are the kind of circumstances that uh, one comes up with so for example if uh, you have a bad reviewer you uh, <laughs> the person with you knows what one means by reviewer too and uh, all the uh, uh, all the expletives that follow are easily understood and so on right so, mm-hmm. so so there are a lot of challenges and it really helps when the person you are with actually understands these uh, uh, challenges and is empathetic to these challenges 
and it's also great when that person is a lot of fun to be with yeah i guess uh, there's nothing much i can add to it except that um how is it to have uh, all of this packaged uh, in your own apartment and in the lab you know it is i think what what the reason cons and i got together was because of her um, i mean at least that was a starting point with her uh, common this uh, at that time it was physics and i think that's one thing to understood right the common interest in changing <laughs> but at that time it was physics. at that time it was theoretical physics and uh, both of us had a very have had a very scenic uh, trajectory to our careers to all everything actually have uh, taken our own sweet time <laughs> including yeah. uh you know starting a family so so the interest got us together uh, and so i think the the framework of our life just kept expanding expansion is a good way to think about it right uh, because life does expand right there are explosions and you know you go i think when you first start your phd is the first explosion and then when you start your uh, postdoc is the second explosion and yeah you yeah. have the uh, is another explosion when you have when you have it is <laughs> but so uh, you know since they were intrinsic we were always intrinsic part of each other's uh, kind of uh, care of the other reasonably okay really yeah yeah that, that's great that's good there's just a comment from the audience if you guys could uh, keep the phone slightly away so that both of you are seen in one frame yeah perfect so so this was about about the pros of being uh, you know having that that partner in your uh, same field are there any cons uh, do you guys have you found out is there a problem in having that well, you know i think there are there's some practical both have the same deadline you know yeah yeah this year we've been teaching two courses together and and uh, one course of course comes to uh, taught most of it but uh, all actually but, uh, but but we do have Uh, you know, great at time, um, so we can't take turns doing the other callings of life, or you know, the other demands of life. And uh, so very often, you know, we have the same meetings, we go to the same um, conferences. So the yeah. the stack part that other able to do, we can't do that very often. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. so that sort of i see is the obvious practical yeah. fall i i i i think when we look at say the last 20 years or so, 30 years 30 years no, 25 but, years uh, in, no i'm i'm talking about the last 20 <laughs> we okay. we see have a lot of the same friends right so it's uh, interesting that when we go to conferences we meet a lot of our friends who show up at these same places for the last over two decades and right you know that's actually great in some ways because it's an enduring relationship they're part of our lives we're part of this but the con is also the diversity right so you uh, also, then, also uh, after the interview if things go astray i have to wonder if which amongst these common friends are going to come <laughs> to my side of the fence and <laughs> <laughs> so that's the real test of these common friends maybe they're not so common after all maybe they're <laughs> some which are more loyal to you and others to me right 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 that's interesting um i i think i want to take you back as as galen said uh, talking about the last 20 years i want to take you both back to your uh, phd time and uh, you know uh, you said uh, uh, both of you did it in the us and i guess you both were not aware of each other at that time in in phd uh So, um, how how was that process to start your PhD in the states? No, no, we are uh, no, we were much aware of it. Uh, we met uh, first year undergrad Xavier's. Ah, yes. And uh, kind of have uh, followed uh, on you know with each other's life and all of that. So I think those were uh, different times. Um, both of us were uh, inclined towards doing uh, physics, uh, theoretical physics. Um, we 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 kind of uh, were i i was sort of you know um looking at doing some research in um, in actually pune at ncl in uh, um mm -hmm. stochastic resonance and um uh, i you know among all the people i was uh, people who work on it i i was particularly attracted to and peter jung uh, who was in ohio university so um 
it worked out well. I really had an amazing uh, PhD, but that's where I went. And Collins was in Pune, also sort of figuring so out. So I did my masters in uh, Pune University in the physics, mm-hmm. and I had a, uh, a very keen interest in nonlinear dynamics at that point, and uh, looking at the applications of it. And biology and neuroscience was one of the natural extensions of. Mm-hmm. applications of nonlinear dynamics so that's what led to uh, my phd at the center for complex systems it was uh, it is called uh, in florida atlantic university where uh, there were a group of people who were doing really interesting uh, uh, work in an area that uh, uh, i had read about at that time called synergetics which was uh, uh, something that uh, The physicist Herman Hakim came up with, and some of his students were uh, working on this. So I was very interested in that, and uh, so it was uh, the Center for Complex Systems for me. So it was a wonderful, uh, sometimes tumultuous, sometimes uh, uh, ecstatic journey of uh, doing a PhD. And uh, I think before we knew each other, after we knew each other rather well, <laughs> we still. Uh, Took uh, trajectories that put us uh, we were sort somewhat of foolishly. Foolishly, uh, right? We were naive. Uh, we were we we were sort of uh, you know we looked at the map and say, oh great, we are both on the same page, right? Uh, we were also yeah. committed to for for no no real in, in hindsight for no real reason, but in maybe uh, <laughs> no no but no real reason at that time, right? But uh, given <laughs> given how it went, uh, I think we're all good decisions. Um, you said East Coast, same time zone. We looked at the map, took a thread. We said, "Sure, I will manage." It turned out to be extremely expensive to travel back and forth. Uh, mobile phones were also very expensive, so that we basically spent last, you know, all that time being in the US, being extremely poor. Just traveling. So he, he, the air tickets were expensive. Calling each other was expensive. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, fighting on the mobile phones also ended up being expensive. So. Um, <laughs> yeah so I, no regret but then we managed to get post docs together yeah my 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 question was going to go there about uh, long distance relationships because in today's world uh, as in my generation right now i see lot of people especially in academia are uh, more or less for the first two years three years they're always in a long distance relationship and it takes a toll you know you you are uh, going through a very strenuous career and it takes a toll on on your uh, personal life as well as your uh, professional academic life uh going from phd to finding a postdoc in the same place uh, you know uh, as i said uh, it was difficult on the uh, even uh, talking on the phone was expensive how how did you guys manage to you know uh, come through that phase and then move into a, a a similar kind of a domain where you both were more comfortable with that i want to hear the, your side of this no i uh, well you were there so <laughs> it's not a surprise uh, but uh, you know it, it i i have to so of course uh, we, we would meet uh, uh, once every few months i uh, I, yeah. i think it's about uh, and uh, So I would travel to Ohio, or so he would travel. I think I remember the first time Collins came to Ohio, and because he was in Florida, he had no uh, uh, winter clothes, and he stood uh, outside my uh, window. And I was, you know, he couldn't get in touch with me. Probably I'm not sure how he came to. Uh, this is that was an adventure. His uh, taxi got lost, uh, and he had no money to pay the cab. So he uh, stood outside my window and was his, uh, you know, thin uh, cotton shirt. uh when it was snowing it was, it was the first snow of the season trying to throw stones <laughs> but um yeah so no so i you know i i, I uh, a lot of adventures that that gives rise to but also i think uh, like i said it's uh, uh i i've seen a lot of uh, students from uh, uh, your generation among actually planning Uh, it's a lot better than yeah, yeah, we did. Than I think we did. sort of uh, they find ways to uh, uh, stay together. Yeah, uh, it is hard to. Uh, uh, it is hard in terms of you don't meet each other for the. Right. Uh, 
to uh, build a life together, right? Like you are so physically far apart. You, you know, I, I do want to add that I think it, it went a long way that, uh, that uh, neither of us had com- compromised on our initial uh, agendas. I mm-hmm. feel that, that so even though it was hard to do this back and forth, and you know, it cost a lot of money, and uh, you know, we we have a few stories that we can tell our grandchildren. But uh, you know, we could have planned it. Uh, but I think what 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 uh, what um, uh, what probably was not a bad idea that uh, we felt that we were we had followed our own sort of, uh, career, career trajectory as we yeah. intended to. But I mean, uh, also, uh, you know, at a later point in time, finding uh, postdoctoral positions together can uh, be somewhat. You, uh, you're making the same difficult. decisions then, right? And I, I think at, at some level we got lucky. Yeah, you can't uh, right? uh, take uh, off the yeah. luck of draw. Or, yeah. And and finding the same, uh, you know, finding faculty positions in the same uh, institute, yeah. even this the same just, city, yeah. this is, is just luck of draw, right? Yeah, yeah. That that was my next question because uh, trying to find the similar uh, like positions in the same place or nearby places, it, you said luck is important, but also uh, you know you have to get uh, you have to really filter out a lot of positions. You cannot you have to do some comp- compromises in terms of uh, what you exactly want and what your partner exactly wants. And how did it work in that? That way for you guys for the the balance between personal and academic life. So you know, I want I want to backtrack on the compromise thing, right? It was in I think at that time it's uh, when we were young, we were in college. Uh, it felt it, in in hindsight it felt feels like it was right to feel that we didn't compromise on our individual uh, uh, career aims, goals, all of that, right? Uh, uh, but I think as we uh, as as we you know, progressed in our careers. Uh, by the by the way, uh, this is again a sort of uh, uh, serendipitous that I ended up doing neuroscience. So I go there wanting to do science on uh, uh, noise, stochasticity, stochastic air resonance, in the biological system, and uh, you know, I go to Peter, and Peter said, you know, in his very typical German way, stochastic resonance, uh, resonance in uh, biological system is a fairy tale, <laughs> and so by that time he was already. On um, systems uh, related to neuroscience, not necessarily neurobiology. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I got, so, without planning to uh, enter neuroscience, somehow our career or our interests started to overlap. Um, uh, some of the smarter decisions we made was I, I, gra- I finished a little bit early before Colin. San Diego is a very neuroscience rich place. So, I had a few offers at that time and I chose to go to San Diego. Knowing that it will be easier to, um, you know, get another position, and it turned out mm-hmm. Collins also having a couple of options uh, uh, in San Diego. So it mm-hmm. just that there are so many sort of uh, the hub for neuroscience research. Right. Uh, and then uh, looking for jobs, uh, I think we again that's where you it's a balance. You do have to think about. Uh, some adjustments, and I hate to call it compromise because it sort of feels that you're underselling yourself, right? But um, you do have to uh, figure out what's an optimum solution at given at that time. And you know, you cannot bring out uh, the luck of you know, you can't look out uh, the roll of dice. Right? That right, right. so much uh, that depends on just things happening suddenly or not happening suddenly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think at some level we got, uh, I, I really feel that we did get very lucky in that uh, we didn't have to, uh, at some crucial stages where it was important, we didn't have to make compromises. And that unfortunately is not the case across the board. Yeah, People yeah. do have to make compromises. And some sometimes these are compromises that one might regret, right? And uh, so... Uh, you know, it's it's really hard to yeah, say yeah, how yeah, things pan out. You yeah, like yeah. Sunita said, you have to find the optimal solution at that point of time. And, and then space. you know, history will tell you whether <laughs> there were okay. you just screwed up. Yeah. Uh, but, but have, so, uh, 
you know, there's a story to I being in Aisar Pune. We came to Aisar Pune and somehow thought this was the right place for us. It was a new institute. Um, there's so much going for Aisar Pune. I think the people were wonderful. People, I think that's what, you know, really, we really fell in love with our colleagues and their ideology and the vision for the institute. And so, yeah. uh, I think coming uh, back to India, there are a lot of opportunities. So as it turned out, we could have gone to a few other places, two other places as a couple. Mm -hmm. Again, very unusual. Uh, we, were just we were just lucky again at that time. Uh, but I still decided uh, Collins had a, 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 a proper job offer, whereas I came in as a fellow. So I took a bit of a risk, um, which I think you might have been somewhat uncomfortable with. Right? Yeah, I think that was, uh, that was something that was uh, worrisome. And uh, yeah. uh, so uh, I think after a year or a year and a half, I, I was able to convert my fellowship to a real job. Uh, but so, mm -hmm. I of faith uh, uh, because of Iser, what Iser Pune somehow uh, uh, stood for, and I, 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 and I think it's played out well. Yeah, that's that's great. You, you're making it easy for me because you're taking the next points and you're helping me to transition into your story. So that's that's great. But I will still take you back, uh, both of you, uh, to your postdoctoral life. Uh, uh, where, apart from academia, in your personal life, you decided to be parents. And this is more uh, directed towards Suhita because, you know, for, for a woman a researcher, it changes completely your life upside down. How, how was that phase of your life together, um, being, being a parent and still, uh, you know, uh, being very, very ambitious for your uh, career? It was a hard time. Uh, you were just so tired. Uh, you know, in the... I, I, I have supportive uh, mentors, but US doesn't have maternity leave. I think I was back at work at six weeks. Yeah. I would, and I have mm -hmm. to uh, honor my, uh, my Tom and Terry were supportive in the sense that they didn't expect much. I was showing up. Uh, very often it was a good break to get away. You were also mm -hmm. poor, so I couldn't really afford uh, to child care. So I think the... Uh, mm -hmm. At some point, we had 20 hours of childcare, we had a nanny, and the rest of the times we were taking turns, and Collins was generous enough that he would go in the night. Um, uh, 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 you, the, the daycare system is also very complicated. UCSD has the best daycare, so you really have, it takes two years for you to get into UCSD daycare and be eventually Literally, you have to plan one year before you plan a child and register. And oh, that can be very really difficult. Yeah, so two years of waiting list. Um, and so we didn't get into UCSD uh, 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 daycare in the beginning. And so we had to hire a nanny who was amazing. You go. And we, see, we love her. And every time we've gone back, our son Alam has uh, spent the best of his time with her. He's taught her, I think his first language was at some point Japanese. He used to say things in Japanese and <laughs> teaching songs. And she also taught him swimming recently. She's a swimming. Teacher. Yeah. So it wasn't the hard, easiest time. Uh, money was hard. We were so tired. And Alam didn't sleep very well for I think, three years of his life. So I think we aged like 10 years, two or three years. Uh, coming Actually, in our early 20s. Yeah. <laughs> we are really quite young. We just look. Uh, I, I I think uh, so. And when we when we and Dake is also extremely expensive by the way. So I think between uh, paying rent in San Diego uh, to uh, and paying uh, his daycare fees, we barely had a few hundred dollars uh, for everything else. Yeah. And um, so we had to collect coupons for his for formula. I'm sure I'm sure you've been reading about it. There's a real shortage, and we were wondering how what we would have done. Uh, formula in that time. Our son used to guzzle formula and he had to go around looking for coupons to get formula on sale. You know, it's, a, it's, it's like going for a hard, long trek and when you're going through it, it sucks, but it's all, it all seems like a fun adventure. That's every trek. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it wasn't as... Well, I, I, I think you painted a rather miserable picture. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it was tiring. Yeah, uh, we did shifts. Uh, 
quite quite a, quite a, so it was a, it was a lot of work uh, i was also traveling to yeah. riverside at that point because my uh, uh, mentor uh, moved from uh, the sock institute to riverside so uh, about uh, an hour and a half drive from oh, there was so two hours, hours when i drive so it it uh, so it was a bit of work they were they were generous they let me have an office in sock and visit riverside a few times uh, a week and yeah. so so you know they were accommodating in many ways but it was also difficult and uh, interesting and fun in other ways too uh, so uh, yeah i i i think we got through, uh, through it uh, reasonably i think kalam is uh, we'll, we'll see yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 i don't know how we screwed him up we will know soon he he's soon going to be a uh, teenager Okay, that that's great. But um, you said this is about personal life. But how how was the uh, uh, the lab work going on at that time? Uh, the the career was, part of it. We we were we not very productive. I mean, we were there and we were you know trudging along. Don't you think that was like we were just too tired to be extremely productive? And I have to say that our uh, mentors took that in their stride and complained much. given how uh, unproductive we were though i i i think another distinct advantage of uh, being theoreticians is that you're not driven by the animal life cycle by the yeah. time cycles that post by experiment right and so yeah. so one and uh, so so we did have a lot of flexibility in terms of time uh, that though that like sweeta said it doesn't mean that you're very productive with your time but mm-hmm. certainly not driven by a very specific uh, uh, schedule uh, that said i think uh, you know and this is something that uh, terry and uh, also my team uh, who was my mentor at the time uh, they were uh, uh, you know they also felt that people who had kids and run families were also efficient Super with their efficient, time yeah. given the time that you have at hand right so there's no dawdling around there's no uh, you're you're at it and you try to get done when you when you can so the, there was a bit of a slump work wise productivity wise but i think uh, having uh, understanding mentors and uh, bit of time management Quite. No, also uh, doing theory, right? So we, we could work from home. We could uh, do a lot of that. Uh, mm-hmm. We're literally working twenty hours of uh, childcare. Imagine, uh, you know, uh, you know, we are yeah. finding uh, babies. So, uh, was, uh, um, yeah, but uh, hindsight, it all looks like it was a big adventure. Yeah, no, I, I can. I can. Uh, the uh, after the first few weeks, my mom, mother was there. Mm-hmm. Even though I had to go back to work in six weeks, calling uh, uh, parents were there, uh, and so you know we did have uh, support system, so it was uh, skeletal very quickly. Uh, that helped. Yeah. Uh, it, it's also going to work. Uh, Amog, I know I might be shocking a few people uh, when you're con- when you're so you know for certain n number of times when you're just a caregiver, going to work seems like a break. The break. Right. Right. So you know, maybe it's six weeks is too shocking for a lot of a lot of us, and it was hard. Uh, very often, it was a pleasant break to get away from caregiving. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the other, the only reason it worked was that I think the minute uh, the biological limitations, uh, I was about biological. Collins was has been always been an equal parent. Uh, yeah. and i think that has you know that has sort of uh, been the characterizing feature of our family even now i think we we swap all the uh, visibly uh, quickly and equally that that help that goes a long way yeah yeah that's that's great to know even in the hardest phase it's it, it kept going in a way you know uh, and then you said that uh, you guys moved to icer and uh, then started to establish your labs and how has that uh, transition worked um, what has been the experience uh, in general 
about maintaining your career and family life balance uh, because that is very very difficult in in academia in general it looks like from the outside because you you constantly tied up and in a way married to your lab you know it's it's your your uh, other family uh, in general so how has that experience been it's just a messy goose spaghetti <laughs> Is it? I mean, uh, yeah. You, you, I think people say these things that you can compartmentalize your life, and you can say that ah, uh, this is the work time, and this is the time that you spend with family, and this is the time you go out and all of that. But then you know, your family were sort of just meshed together in this in this spaghetti. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing necessarily, right? because you're uh, always. Uh, you know so, so sometimes it's uh, uh, uh it it can be like i th- i think today we, being a sunday we ended up uh, uh, spending time doing things that uh, needed to be done at work right. and alum was promptly sent around to do various errands uh, so uh, you know but but th- there isn't an easy compartment and uh, sometimes it needs to be sometimes uh, it's it's a joy to have it yeah. all together and sometimes it's a real pain in the neck also because you do need a break and sometimes you do want to walk uh, walk away from uh, from things certain aspects yeah. of your love as uh, uh, of your work but then you also want to uh, walk away from certain aspects of your personal life so <laughs> <laughs> you know i sort of right. think, uh, this uh, there's a fallacy of uh, that we, we all believe in uh, this compartmental Um, I mean, in your head, it's it's not compartmentalized. There's no reason why physical space or physical time should be compartmentalized. No, I I I, I think that's especially this this condition is especially acute. I know it sounds pathological when I say it like that, but it's particularly acute because Suita and I do end up talking about work uh, a lot when we are at home, and uh, sometimes we. Talk about home when we are at work too. Right? So it's uh, so, so so therefore it's not uh, also. I, I yeah I think uh, you know you sort of our students too. I think is sort of especially uh, the PhD students that we spend so much time uh, with. I think at some uh, at some point in time uh, there, there are more than just you, you you have more than just a professional relationship with them. Uh, yeah. because there's so much uh, time that you spend with each other and you you get to know them as people and uh, with all their strengths and flaws and they know get to know you uh, 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 as people with all your flaws right and uh, i i think uh, it, that also helps you forgive each other uh, because there are times when uh, you're probably unfair to each other and uh, yeah. so that's also you know you can't then compartmentalize that as being professional Life, you know, your relationship with, especially your graduate students. Yeah. Because it's so yeah. much that depends, uh, you know, their of, of their life that depends on uh, their relationship with you, and vice versa, right? So it's uh, right, right. Uh, it, I have a typical, very typical question, but I think it's a very important one. Uh, you know, at 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 varied, uh, very different phases, you have. uh this situation that uh, takes uh, that happens that one person is having a good time and the other ha- is having a real bad time and in academia especially something like experiments are working in someone's lab and the other person is just struggling with some other experiments or grants or lot of things what guys uh, like you do uh, in in personal life in personal space where uh, one person is having this bad time and the other person is having a good time but has to you know juggle through this uh, uh balance you know i i i i have to say that that's happened i tend to be rather grumpy when the bad times uh, he's going through a grumpy time. phase they're calling him grumpy colin <laughs> grumpy I, I i i think uh, uh it's it's good that very often my family accommodates my grumpiness uh, and i hope i accommodate <laughs> sometimes too but uh, yeah you do go through these uh, uh phases and actually being in the same uh, uh, profession helps people understand helps uh, helps us understand what the other is uh, going through 
so yeah. it's helpful i i i would say to be uh, scientists together mm-hmm. you're able to deal with the other person you, you don't think we would have been together if i wasn't a scientist i thought you liked me for me and because i'm your colleague i thought you liked me for my looks but then <laughs> <laughs> No, but see, I told you helps. this is going to go downhill from at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, um, yeah, 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 and 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 then uh, uh, when you now uh, you're at a stage where you have very well established labs and everything is all set, uh, what your advice to uh, I mean, do you at all get involved in giving personal advice to uh, uh, your mentees around or you know because apart from you being a science mentor you're at at some point you're also a, a mentor uh, in in people's personal problems because you spend so much time with them do you guys get involved in it and from your experiences what what is that you you know try to uh, tell them a personal problems of of students students uh, yeah students and pe- people around you you know in the lab or uh, even I getting from that, from that right we uh, think um, at some level that you know at different different sort of uh, radius uh, you are one big family right it's on line and so but but we do talk about other and i think that's part of mentoring uh, right you sort of yeah. sometimes work personal sometimes less personal but i think uh, you know we are we sort of chanced upon this great uh, uh, you know wise, wise man uh, siddharth uh, mukherji a uh, few years ago at sfn and we often quote what he said because it's so um, i i i think it's such a gem do you want to say it collins because you, no, you no, know it's so uh, th- so you know from uh, 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 adichi's book is it adichi chino 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 achebe's book right when things fall apart yeah. and, and so in the interview they asked him how do you achieve so many things right how do you you know you making documentaries you're writing you know pulitzer winning books you're doing amazing uh, top of the line you're a family man and he sort of paused for a minute as well you know things fall apart Uh, when you are trying when you are completely submerged in one thing you suck at other things and that's how it is and you just have to i think accept it right and then uh, you yeah. focus on something else and the thing that you were working on before or you know focus is going to fall apart so i think this is sort of um tolerance towards uh, uh, this aspect where you know you hope that you know your students also end up having a high dimension life not just a monochromatic you know uh, 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 one one trick monkey excel at something you you want them to be good humans they want you want them to be good citizens of the world you want them to be pro- also be uh, have fun and so how do you achieve all this well i think at at a given point in time you're probably going to be completely committed and excelling at only and yeah. then and other things are going to suffer it has to be some acceptability uh, allow, to allow other things to suffer, right? and, and then there's going to be chance to make up for it and i think we've done that I, I, often i think our, our personal lives take a toll uh, but hopefully we also have a chance to make up for it um then right. from, yeah. i think something that we talk to our students uh, very often uh, about you know you know things suffer and then you you know make sure that you make up for it right? but there's also joy yeah. completely sort of um, being sub- submerged in something yeah 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 it is it's it is wonderful uh, to know this uh, other aspect of uh, both of you guys um, and as 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 most people understand and know this that there is no one great mantra to having a good personal life with your partner and having a good uh, successful uh, career but i think both of you are uh, you know showing as a, as a, as a uh, good example to others uh, of this thing can be managed and can be done so uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight 
and uh, for sharing these uh, wonderful experiences and uh, see you soon sometime thank you thank you very much amon see you around bye bye see you bye bye so what do we do exit this i'll do exit this yeah, you just have to uh, exit it yeah you can kick us out if you want uh it's okay. better you cut the call so that it stays uh, okay leave leave we are leaving bye thanks bye bye see you yeah so that was the story of um, sukta and collins um, and uh, that's it for the episode tonight uh, we'll uh, join you again uh, in the next month in uh, june where shweta brings you with uh, another interesting story uh, another good team till then take care and uh, keep following us and sharing our videos for uh, reaching out to more and more people thank you bye bye